Championship Sunday continues on CBS as Patrick Rafter, the new pride of Australian tennis, gets set for the match of his life. His opponent, also looking for his first Grand Slam victory, Great Britain's Greg Rosetsky. It is the men's championship of the 1997 U.S. Open. guessing you didn't pick these two to be here out of the 128 men and I'm guessing they didn't think they'd be here as well but they battled their way through the toughest tournament in tennis and today this afternoon at Arthur Ashe Stadium we'll see how they play out in the chapter we call big time New York City tennis a full crowd in to see Patrick Rafter and Greg Rosetsky they will play for the men's final now let's throw it up to our championship team, Mary Carrillo, John McEnroe, and Jim Nance. Jim? Well, Pat, thank you. This is a day of mixed emotions for all of us at CBS. We celebrate Championship Sunday, but there is a palpable sense of sadness as we say so long to one of our finest. Pat O'Brien is leaving the network after 16 years. He's heading off to a great new opportunity that begins tomorrow, and thankfully, we'll be able to enjoy his work five times a week. We're sure. He'll prove, too, that no one can access Hollywood quite like Pat O'Brien. It all started for Pat back in the early 80s with his signature show, At the Half. It's where we first found him to be a true stylist. Then at the Olympics, the fireside chats, late night at the Olympics from Alberville and Lillehammer as well, where he had a cult following, hosting the NCAA tournament and Final Four during the 90s with friends like Clark Kellogg and Coach K. But it all started for Pat in 1981 right here at this very event, the U.S. Open. And Pat, Godspeed and good luck from all of us at CBS. We're going to miss you. Wish I had some of that hair back that saw in some of those pictures. Thank you, Jim. I have so many friends here and I almost have to quote my predecessor in this chair, Brent Musburger, uh, when he said I've had the best seat in the house and I certainly have. There's a lot of things that I'd like to say again, like let's go back to Jim Nance or let's go down to Andrea Joyce or my, my partner Mary Carrillo or Patrick McEnroe. Uh, but I'm a loyal uh, employee here at CBS. I don't think I've ever been named Employee of the Month, but loyalty is a big thing to me. So one of the final things I'd like to say is uh, coming up here on CBS, except on the West Coast, 60 Minutes. For the last time. Jim, back to you. Thank you. That was very sweet. Well, Pat, before you send it back up to Jim, I just want to say on behalf of everyone at CBS, I know how much they're going to miss you. But on behalf of me and all the tennis players, we are going to miss you so much and your style that you brought to tennis and that you brought to sports. And so I wanted to ask you if maybe in the next couple of years, if I'm here, if maybe I could ask, just take a couple of your lines that you made famous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. Big time New York tennis. And, you know, it's not going to be the same anymore without you around, but we in tennis and at the U.S. Open and CBS will try to roll on. <laughs> oh, that's very so sweet. That for you. Thank you very much. Well, you've been great. You know that I love you and uh, taught me a lot about uh, tennis as well as about life, and that's all very nice. I think it's time to play some tennis. Let's go back to Jim. Jim? Thank you, Pat, and we do indeed look forward to watching your career roll on. I never liked them. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm crazy about him. I love I love Pat O'Brien. We all do. I'm, I miss him already. I do too. Let's talk about the men's uh, final. We're yeah. going to see the return to the old classical serve and volley style that the Aussies made famous some 25 years ago, conjuring up some great images in our mind when we watch Patrick Rafter play today, Mary. That's exactly right. I mean, the Aussies really knew how to do this so well. From Ken Rosewall, who didn't even have a big serve but had a tremendous volley. Roy Emerson, he'd come in on anything. He served and volley his way through a couple of French Open wins. Rod Laver, of course, won everywhere and often right from the net. Tony Roach, uh, who is working with Patrick Raptor, so too is this guy, Nuke, John Newcomb, served and volleyed. And last yesterday, after Raptor won his same final match, 
There was Nuke right along with him. It is a wonderful brand of tennis. A lot of people don't like the big serving of men's tennis, but serve and volley tennis is classic and very, very be beautiful. It was beautiful to watch yeah. yesterday when he beat Chang in straight sets. But let's talk about serving in this final, and both of these players are capable of coming up with a big serve, especially Greg Rosetsky. Well, after hearing Mary say that, I recommend Rosetsky to pull back a little. Don't serve quite as big. Show that you have a better all-around game. Show that you mix up your serves better than you used to. Look at this right here. This will tell you the story. I mean, look how big these guys serve. I mean, Rafter was in the 110s, 115s. Rosetsky is the world's hardest server at this point. I mean, take a look at this. This is his big bomb up the middle. No one's going to get close to that. Jonas Bjorkman's one of the best in the business right now. He couldn't get near it. That's a second serve, believe it or not. He struck about uh, 180 miles an hour. Well, only 141. The highest. Um, you know, he was sick yesterday. So he's, <laughs> that's the hardest serve, second serve in the history of the game. So you see, it's impossible to cover both both sides uh, when you're trying to return. I mean, you're either going to have to sort of lean to the ad side or to your backhand the way Rafter would on a righty, or you're going to have to give lean over towards the middle and give that lefty slice away. And Patrick Rafter's a little bit different. He takes something off his serve. He's not quite as big a server. Michael Chang was attempting to get in close here, but he's such a good volleyer. That, that is why he is so tough to beat in his first slam final. Well, it's a final no one could have ever imagined at the start of the year, much less the start of this tournament. Rafter began 1997 as the 62nd ranked player in the world. Rosetsky was 48. <laughs> and Rosetsky unseated here, making it a clean sweep for the Grand Slams in 97. All four finals featured an unseated contestant. Well, you're going to see Pete Sampras around for a couple of years, but this is a true change in the guard that's taking place right now. Patrick Rafter's first case. Instead of Boris Becker, Jim, Stefan Edberg, Michael Skeet, Yvonne Lendl, who was retired a few years back, these are the guys who should be in the next four or five years fighting for this title. Patrick Rafter and Greg Ruzetsky, two of the best players in tennis right now. Ken Rosewall, the last Australian to play in the final at the Open. That was in 74. Raptor wasn't even two years old at that time. 15, 30. Patrick Raptor's idol, one odds we didn't mention, Pat Cash, who wasn't given a wild card in the qualifying this year. He's had a lot of injuries. Personally sad because Pat's a friend of mine. Raptor's a slightly bigger version of Pat Cash. Not the legs, but the size. And a slightly bigger serve than Pat Cash. And that's why Pat has had such a horrific time trying to come back. Serve does damage his players the way he, the opponents. The way but still, he's a guy who won Wimbledon. I'm going to say this real quick. 1987, and can't get a wild card in the qualifying. That was the last Australian Grand Slam title, Cash, 87 Wimbledon. Rosetsky opened the year 48th in the world, climbed to 20th, entering this event, his highest rank ever. And if he wins today, he will, in fact, move to number five in the world. One title this year, that was at Nottingham. Well, Patrick Rafter, I've been told in the locker room, will move to number three in the world if he wins this. I mean... You talk about a change. And Rosetsky can move to five, and he wins. No, he didn't. Forty, thirty. I got to skip for CBS next year before the men's final to get it going a little more instead of the players looking there half asleep like Rafter did have them sweat pouring from their faces you know different corners banging walls or something Game Rafter. so Rafter holds to open the men's final
Jeff Gordon. He's enjoyed he championship raced up here. here. Yeah. <laughs> Set a new record on the New Jersey Turnpike. But you never you never hear about race car drivers getting in accidents. Very good record. O off the track. Off the track. I mean. <laughs> Good job there by Rizetsi. That was not an easy overhead. He chose to take it in the air. That was Love 15. Instead 15 all instead of Love 30. Earlier this tournament, Rizetsi said that he's been watching Pete Sampras serve in his matches on TV to watch how well he mixes it up. He said, that's what I've been trying to do. call was there. Jim Zimmerman is the chair umpire. That serve looked in, John. Well, it looked in, and also the beeper did not go off, and they are playing the Cyclops, so Greg is saying, wait a sec, we're playing the Cyclops, it didn't go off. And this linesman is apparently claiming that it was more than 12 inches out, because mm. that covers the foot. There's no way in the world that was more than a quarter of an inch out, if it was out at all. It may have been two inches in. Uh, that, that is uh, not a good decision there. Second serve for Wyszewski. Uh, it's only fitting he won that point. Now we can forget about it. 40, 50, 50. Today, the question for Rosetsky revolved around health concerns. Well, Patrick Graft is not going to have chances like that too often. Have the time to sort of guide that back in for winter. Rosetsky usually hits it with a lot more zip than that. Even though on the gun it registered at 135, it was more like 75, 80. Rosetsky, who's been battling a throat infection since Thursday. Let's get a report now from Andrea Joyce. Andrea? All right, Jim, I'm with Gwen Corovan, the throat specialist who has treated Greg Rosetsky this week for laryngitis and tracheitis. How close would you say he is today to being 100%? Very close. There's just really traces of the infection remaining. It doesn't seem like laryngitis would really affect you as a player unless you're going to argue a lot of calls, but uh, what about the tracheitis? Well, because of the tracheitis, you can feel a lot of tightness in your upper airway and you can feel quite short of breath, so it definitely can affect your game in the passage of air. Is he had an improvement today, though, over yesterday? Yes, quite definitely. Okay, we'll see how he holds up. Back to you guys. Both players. <laughs> players in a championship Grand Slam final for the first time and will battle a case of championship well, now itis I know also. why he's gone now I know why he's gone to the doctor three four days and all of a sudden he's eager to see the doctor <laughs> <laughs> well it's rare air that they're both trying to breathe out there today well, when I saw uh, Greg just before the match he said look you know I showed some guts out there yesterday. Give me some credit. Two sets to one down against a guy playing the best ten of his, tennis of his life and coming back is a good effort. So give me a little credit. He thinks some give him a hard time up here because he's, he's a little sensitive about that court incident. Looking to be the first lefty to win this in 13 years. Who was that? I don't recall, oh, John. Just, Who was just that? Just thought I'd bring that up. Some no. guy named McEnroe, maybe? <laughs> Rusetsky did not drop a set until yesterday, taking Bjorkman in five, seven-five in the fifth. 
beating the likes of Knipshield, Vacek. <laughs> you just wanted to say Vajek. that name. Yeah. Wanted to make an appearance on Championship <laughs> Sunday. Well, he did show me a lot against Bjork. He really appeared to be about ready to lose total control early in that four set. in the first. Classic serve and volley by Patrick Rafter. Ruzetsky serving. 1-2 in the first. Good. 15 love. love. Got to go back to 1933. Find a player from Great Britain. Basic and Aussie in the final. 138 mile an hour serve. Fred Perry, the last British player to win a Grand Slam title, 1936. Zeski's uh, had an outstanding service game. It's his first days, but unhittable so far. He goes for the records when he's up 40 love. He may even do it on the second serve. We saw this yesterday. Love game to all. Perry, the last man from Great Britain to win a slam. That was in 36. And again, the last Australian was Cash in 87. Who was the last Canadian? Just by set of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> well, to explain, Ruzetsky, born in Canada, transplanted Canadian who gained citizenship in Great Britain two years ago. Oh. <laughs> Tell the researchers in the truck they don't need to check, okay? It's been five, six hundred years, yeah. so <laughs> don't, don't worry back there. <laughs> Just relax, watch the match. You, you drove home that point yesterday. We have the complaint calls to prove it. <laughs> well, they, they can't come up with any t time they did, so put up or shut up. <laughs> Here's Rosetsky's big problem. I mean, he, he's proven many times just how strong the service game is, but can he break Patrick Rafter? Rafter faced eight break points against Michael Chang yesterday, and Chang was not able to convert, and Chang has a better return game than Rosetsky. The question is if Raptor can take as good a care of his return game today. Well, I felt like when a guy was serving bombs at me, though, that sort of paralyzed me slightly, and eventually it did take its toll on my own service game, and I think that's what Raptor has to watch out for. We saw that shot quite often against Bjorkman, that nice slice backhand right up the line. And believe you me, Greg Ruzetsky has one of the biggest, along with Philip Pusa, serve in the history of the game. And we're not talking, forget the guys we were mentioning. No offense to Fred Perry and Don Budge, but they didn't serve like Wozetsky. <laughs> they had nicer pants. Yeah, and those and nice ties, pants. too. 40 to me. Well, Philip Pusa, I guess, still has the technical edge. I didn't... 142.3. Yeah. I didn't know that was. And who can forget Julian <laughs> Alonzo a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. Hey, Ace for Raptor. 3 2 after in the first. We'll continue from the U.S. Open after this message and a word from your local station. Raptor leads 3 2. What's your early take on this final, Mary? Um, so far, there's nothing between them. I honestly think this is, could, this is a match that could get decided by tie breaks. Ruzetsky's <laughs> 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 had five tie break sets in this tournament, and he's won all five of them. And Rosetsky going into the U.S. Open had only hit one serve all year in the 140 range. 
Here at the Open, he's already struck seven that have gone in the 140-plus range. Philippoussis does it all year round. And a couple of weeks ago, that other guy, we saw Julian Alonzo was playing for the first time with a speed gun at the Hamlet Cup in Long Island. Got so excited because he's got a big serve. He, he hit one as hard as he could, hurt his wrist, and he's been out ever since. <laughs> and in fact, he, he could have been here today. <laughs> in the final. But, yeah, exactly. And that would have been a surprise. <laughs> first double fall for Greg Rosetsky. You know, they were looking at that record for fastest serve, and they don't go to a decimal point here, so how do we know it wasn't 142.4? Why do we necessarily give Philippoussis the three-tenths of a, well, edge? It's actually recorded in, in kilometers, not miles per hour. There you go. So there you go but not at this event. So I think it's because the ATP has a lot of events. They encourage people to play too many. It's sort of like, you know, wanting a lot of people to do well instead of the top, so they're just throwing a bone to Philip Because Grzezewski's doing better here. <coughs> Pretty good there. Huh? Spread the wealth. 30, 40. Patrick Rafter has a break point chance here, 2-3. Ref, excuse me, Ruzetsky struggled this game at the net. Not looking good at the net. There is the break, and Ruzetsky does not have nearly as good a net game as Patrick Rafter. And I think it's actually hard to develop a serve and volley game if your serve is so big. Because you don't get to volley much. Well, here's the problem that Ruzetsky's run into. Uh, number volleys right into the net obviously tightened up that game and Rafter gets the early break he's looking more comfortable out there more within himself at the moment love 15 Rafter has yielded only one set this entire tournament. That was to Agassi. Well, I still think that Rafter, if he's vulnerable to anything, is that lob. He gets real close to net. Rosetsky hit a defensive lob there, but it paid off for him. <laughs> That's a nice-looking return from Greg Rosetsky. Looking to break right back here. Big boost for him if he can do that. several times yesterday struggling with his toss and Mary pointed out it's far better to let it drop regroup than try to swing wildly <laughs> three break points for Rosetsky love 40 take a look at Rafter's toss here he's looking to kick it up throws it behind his head doesn't get enough on it Ruzeski has no problem hitting this forehand winner. Love 40 now. That's how, oh, oh, they caught, I was about to say there's the break. Yeah. 15, 40, 40. The Mac Camels tell us whether or not that ball was in. Unless, of course, we don't have the Mac Cam on that side. All right, pull one out from a couple years ago. <laughs> Off the tape machine. <laughs> Get the tape ready. It was out. That was 
think yesterday Chang was 0 for 8 in break opportunities. 30, 40, 40. First two here for Rosetsky tonight. Was out. Final verification from the McEnroe Connors match of 84. <laughs> <laughs> Into our archives. That was a point ago. <laughs> yeah, we be believe us, trust us. He did it again. This is what he has continued to do, Patrick Rapper, protecting his serve. He did it against Michael Chang. He did it many times against Andre Agassi a couple of rounds ago. That's impressive stuff. From Love 40 Down. It's such a beautifully judged point. Didn't go for too big a serve, 114 miles an hour. Advantage Got himself beautifully into the net. Slid under that shot and drew the error. For the last guy that I remember, Mary, tell me if I'm wrong, that played this many big points on seconds as well as Becker. That won so many oh, points. Yeah. Nearly into the upper deck. Nice comeback. Raptor leads. Raptor's five, up two. a break in the first. Well, for this tournament, Raptor has been broken ten times. In 41 break tries. How do you interpret that? That's just that's just an absolutely terrific effort. He's he's basically defending against break points about 75% of the time. No wonder he's still around on Sunday. Hi. 30 long. Doing a very fine job, Rizetsky, of moving his serve around the box in this game. He's he's drawing miss hits from Raptor, which just shows he's got he's got Raptor fooled. Two shank returns in a row. And game for Rizetsky. Serves another love game. Did it once before in this set. But Raptor will serve for set number one. Next Saturday, college football, our season premiere on CBS. Most will see Arizona State, Miami. Some will see SEC action, South Carolina, Georgia, or Illinois, Louisville. It starts at 3 o'clock Eastern time with our premiere also of college football today. We hold some Craig James. We alongside in the studio. Oh. 15 low. Well, that first serve percentage is excellent. It's a good day for playing tennis. Wind is not a problem. It's not too hot. So we should be able to see the players playing their best out here today in Arthur Ashe Stadium. And two points away from taking the first set. 30 long. I saw Rafter with 30, his 15. athletic ability scooping that ball up and Rosetsky with the big forehand he possesses. Rips it up the line for a winner. Picture perfect there. Took a little bit off the first serve, a little bit of kick. Rosetsky did well with the return, thought he hit a good low return, but Rafter won better. Double set point, Patrick Rafter. And ace. That's 6-3. 29-minute 
first set victory for Raptor. We'll be right back. Jim Nance, John McEnroe, Mary Carrillo. We start the second set at Ash Stadium. 15 love. The loser of the first set has gone on to win two of the three meetings between these two. So good <laughs> news for Rosetsky. <laughs> Maybe that's part of the game plan. Well, huh? last meeting won by Rafter in three up in New Haven a couple weeks before oh. this event. Oh. Oh. It was 30 wide, love. 30 love. Rafter leads the series 2-1. to one. By the way, all three matches went the limit. This match, Rosetsky was called for a number of foot faults, stubbornly refused to move back, lost the match, and afterwards his coach, oh. Brian, teaches him, hey, look, you got to, you know, you got to not be so stubborn out there and be willing to make some subtle adjustments and the more he listens to brian teacher the better he's got because that's one of the things that's, 30, of course as Rizeski throws in a double that he's done better is to make quicker adjustments number two for him to switch gears if necessary to take something off to serve to be more aggressive he has a tendency to stay back there and want to trade some groundies And he likes to play fast, so every now and then you got to pull him back, pull himself back. For serve. I think serving really told uh, quite a story in that first set, Mary. Raptor was just sublime on serve. That's a beautiful one. The 40, second 50. ace of the day for Rosetsky. Raptor served at 72 percent with three aces. Rosetsky moving it around. And that's a great idea. Again, that's what he said he wants to copy from the Pete Sampras service game. It's beautifully balanced all over the box. First oh. serve percentage, though, Mary, very low for Rosetsky. 45% of the first set. Again, he got out aced, three to one by Raster, set one. Raptor was 72% efficient. First game, second set. His first serve. Back with Raptor serving. <laughs> Tremendous effort by Rosetsky. Tremendous athletic ability by Patrick Rafter. Love. You're right, Rosetsky's scrambling. Lucky to get this one back. Does a pretty good job there, but Rafter just too good on the overhead. Nice bounce on those legs. That first serve into the net, but 72%, Mary, in the first set. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to break that. Raptor is doing as good a job of moving the ball around as Greg Rosetsky. And then keep in mind, Raptor. once he gets the ball into play, he's he volleys so much better than everybody else around him, including Rosetsky. Imagine Raptor here. He can serve this one out. Whoop! Too late for that. It's my big chance for the telestrator there. Rosetsky has employed the lob a number of times, and that's to good effect even when he doesn't win the points. Because, Sean, as you've been saying, 30, Patrick Raptor crowds the net so quickly that shots like that are going to perhaps get him a little bit further away from the net, make him a little less eager to and, get that and tight. And work a little harder, and physically, let's face it, it's the seventh match. I don't care how easy they've been. He's had problems with his nerves in the past. Another long, that was well long. 40, 15. We saw the Visine Mac Cam a moment ago. It's become quite popular here. Sponsored by Visine at this tournament. And donated by John McEnroe. <laughs> what do you do with those the rest of the year, by the way? Um, I have them down in my gallery for people trying to <laughs> grab all that great art. 40, 30. Because there's usually 500 people, so I have to differentiate between one person that goes, what is it, one five hundredths of a... Second. Oh, second. 
You get the idea. 40, 30. Thursday on CBS, Mike Wallace remembers at 9 o'clock. 30 years of 60 Minutes plus 30 years before that from Thurgood Marshall to Barbara Streisand. Big tennis fan. And he must love watching Martina Hingis play because she gets it over in 60 minutes or less. 15 love. That ball was well wide there. Patrick Raptor stepping out of the batter's box there, asking that this be rethought. <laughs> Looking back to the, the linesman in the middle of the court. Oh. He tracked it, just couldn't handle the heat of it. 30 love. Well, Greg gave Patrick a couple extra chances. First with that volley. Even here, Rafter guessed right. That one too long. 30 love. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 40 love. When Rafter struck that return, he thought he'd hit a winner. He thought Ruzeski's first serve of the game was out. So he's a uh, good call there by the umpire. He's down quickly to 40 love. This is where yesterday, 40 love, second serve, Rosetsky. Served one up at 141. Oh. 40-15. Well, Raptor's got to move forward here at an angle, not let that, not move sideways. That way he can get a better shot, at least getting something on it. That was not a clean ball. He mishit it, but still had the winner. and heady play by Rafter there. Particularly this shot. Take a look at this. He doesn't go for too much. Just make 40, sure he gets 30, it in nice and low to Ruzetsky and Ruzetsky comes up with the error. That was, couldn't be better done. He never, it would have been extremely difficult to hit a winner. He doesn't have the pace off the forehand that the Sampras is the Agassiz have. Came up with a new one. Oh. Second serve at 40-30. One all. That time Ruzetsky was expecting the dipper and Rafter put a little more pace on the pass and got the error. Out, he's out thinking Greg out there right now at the moment. Ruzetsky's first serve percentage is hurting him big time. I think sometimes Ruzetsky pulls down with his head on these serves and that's why they fly around on him some. Really, the only thing that separated these two between Advantage in the first set. I mean, Rosetsky had four errors. You could see sometimes how he, you could see why that head. He, it doesn't say up high and nice and quiet. He's got to he's got to guard against that. Keep keep that up nice and still and high. That's well done, Greg Rosetsky. Two one. Rosetsky in the second. Rosetsky leads two one. One of the proud sponsors of this year's Open, the Green Fujifilm Blimp. 
There's some partly cloudy skies. There have been a forecast of some possible thunder showers in the early evening here. <coughs> Recognize that man, Von Lindel. Team Love. That's a surprise. He hardly ever comes around to Von Lindel, but he is part of. He and Pam Shriver represent the players uh, and counsel the USTA at the US. Thirty Love. Another fine serve from Patrick Rafter, his fourth. The only thing that separated these two, as I was saying before, uh, in that first set was the one break of serve of Rosetsky's. Three of the four unforced errors Greg had in that set happened on his own serve game. He had a poor volleying game and he got broken. He did a lot better job as Patrick's fifth ace. A lot better job bucks. volleying that previous game to pull out what I consider to be a big game exactly. that last game. Exactly, John. He, he just, he was able to suck it up that last game. And Raptor has been so comfortably holding. Hey, and even when he's in trouble, he's been able to figure out a way to hold on. And he's applying constant pressure to Rosetsky's service Two games. Showing a little uh, agility here. Back to the ball boy in the corner. Fifteen. Remember they got Lendl? I could I felt that a few the wrath of Lendl a few times. That may have hit in a fairly poor spot for Ruzeski. Brushes it off, love fifteen. Yeah. That's a good way to make up for it. How do you react to something like that, John? Well that's the best possible way he could react to it right there. I perhaps would have reacted a little bit differently. <laughs> I would have hit an immediate drop volley. <laughs> Hope the guy sat it up and gone for him the next point. It's an alpha male thing, isn't it? I mean, it's just, you know, one guy does and some other guy. I've seen a lot of that. I, I, I don't know if it's just a male thing there. The Scalia Williams match had a little edginess going to it. No kidding. Venus Williams wisely sidestepped that whole issue, did not make it as big a racial deal as her father did. And I, I'd love to think that Venus Pretty Williams odd. is going to continue to get things right as she makes her way into the very top ranks of women's tennis. She she would really be something if she became uh, a regular on the tour and played as well as she's shown at this year's Open. I thought it was more about actually her just coming in and not sort of respecting the older players. Right. Even, although the top players are younger than she is. <laughs> Ingus is... Double fault. Patrick Rafter has quietly gone to break point after Kuzetsky's third double. For serve. Already down a set. Kuzetsky, this is a huge point. that in the first set. Raptor lead, 3-2. Yeah. Open the sixth game of the second set. He's up a break. And a set. <laughs> 15 all. Rosetsky's in real trouble now. And again, I thought this could be a match decided by breakers, but with Rosetsky dropping his serve once a set, this could be a straight sets win for Raptor the way he's playing. <coughs> Raptor has been much more opportunistic. Rosetsky's totally aggravated now. Raptor's 30, had 15. two break point chances. He's made most break every one of his chances. Here's Rosetsky with time after time lining things up and goofing them up, especially from the net.
Well, that's what he's going to have to do is get the body weight moving forward. 30 Step old. forward. When you pull up, it's suicide. With trying to couple with the big returns or passes. He did it beautifully there. The bowling, that ball kicked up, but not quite as high as it would have been had he waited. Rafter couldn't handle the volley. He's also got to take a couple deep breaths here, make sure he's focused, not give away any more freebies. He's already down to setting a break. That, that ball was just wide, point for 4-2. He doesn't want to make this any easier for Rafter than he needs to, than he already has. For serve. Plus, of course, Jimmy's convinced that by tossing his racket a couple times, it gets him going a little bit. Gets the energy going, because he's a little low on energy out there. This is, after all, the finals of the U.S. Open. Game Raptor. Are you speaking autobiographically when you, just, when you talk about uh, a possibility Quite like that? Possibly. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I've been known to do that a few times. Didn't move the feet a bit. And not surprisingly, forehand goes in the net. Mary, to be quite honest, I wish I had just tossed my rack instead of, you know, some of the Love line questioning, because that way you can just sort of People aren't really angry if you're sort of mad at yourself. But when you get mad and blame it on others, uh, then they start getting a little upset, oh. even though they were wrong every time. <laughs> so they... well, that's the trick. Don't spray the room. Just uh, take it out on the racket. That must have felt good. Hingis, 15, love oh. and four to win her third slam of the year. Here. <laughs> Rafter 15, looks so 30. calm and composed, playing so within himself. Just takes that Uzetsky serve, makes it look like nothing. That forehand winner up the line. Oh. Ah. Another five. volley miss. Yep, two break points for Rafter again. 15 40. 40. Well, he can kiss the second set goodbye if he loses this service game. He was 40. deep there. All that ball needed was to go over the net. Two breaks. Raptor's going to have to try to get the second break point chance. Tough. Oh. No! Ball change. Raptor return. The Blazer at 138. And he leads 5 2 in the second. It's 7.10 Monday morning in Australia. Fifteen dollars. And Australia TV. Beaming it back with Fred Stolle and John Newcomb. Let's listen in. Forcing Rosetsky now out of first person to go for a, a little bit too much. 30 love.
Jordy double Mateen. fault. That's only Rafter's third of the match there, so he's still at 73% on first serve, so you're still pretty happy with that. Yes, well done. He's varying his serve nicely, Pat. First set he went mainly to the backhand, but he's getting more confident as the match goes on. Really getting on top of Rosetsky in that department. Two set points now for Rafter. Taking a little break there as he prepares to serve for the second set. That's the third time that Pat's done that in the match. A little bit of nerves. The ball toss flicking out to the left. That <laughs> was <laughs> 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 second set. Two right. sets so still left to the number 13 seed. And there's the Aussie contingent, Tony Roach there, leaning forward with his wife Sue. Raptor leads, two sets below. You're watching all of this live on Nine's Wide World of Sports uh, coverage over the two weeks here. And the Aussies are happy. Nice to drop in as we witness Rafter going up two sets to none. 15 love. John Newcomb, the last Australian to win the U.S. Open. That was back in 1973. Those Aussies sounded absolutely thrilled up there. The <laughs> energy was send up some cappuccinos. The man is up two sets of love and is cruising at 30 low. 6 3 6 2 in an hour, so I suppose they should be able to relax a touch. But this guy, Greg Ruzeski, has got to get it going right now. No, he's missed about 10 of those. More frustration. Bad news, it's not the Nets' fault. 30 15. He's totally lost his edge. He's just not focused out there. And it's okay, as I said, if you use your anger in a positive way, but. If he's going to turn it around, John, where does he begin? Make sure he holds serve. You know, mix up that serve a little better. I'd suggest starting serve a little bit harder, actually. I think he's actually, Ruzetsky pulled back a little bit too much. You like that, sir? Right? It's 96 miles an hour. That's not going to scare Raptor. He's seen that all term. He went. 40, show him the big bombs now. Tighten him up a little bit. Make him realize he's only a set away from winning his first U.S. Open title. Go right at him. The heat. There we go. Game okay, Bruce has the That one, 136. So he holds to open up the third. First, game, first two to Raptor. For Rafter, this is his sixth appearance in a final this year, but he's 0 for 5 in the 97 season, and he's only won once as a pro. That was back in 1994 at Manchester. Raptors ranking and performances Love have 15. certainly improved, but he hasn't been able to close it, Mary. That's that's right. He's five times been a finalist. Four of those five, by the way, were on hard courts. But I, I think that's not going to be the case today. Some handsome names, though, he fell to in the finals, like Sampras, Chang, Kafelnikov, Moya. <laughs> Just why, but perhaps he's not going to get that call. And now love 30. He's taking a love look 30. at it. I don't think there's any doubt that was why. No overall. But it was the sideline, boys. 
It's okay. It, it was a little wide, but on the line. <laughs> the bottom line, line though, is love 30. <laughs> Another guy by the name of Barnes Becker. He'd only won one tournament before he played Wim Wimbledon. 15, 30. So it's been done. Gustavo Cuerton's uh, first tournament. I believe Mats V. Landers won his first at the French. The first event he ever won, yeah, it was the Paris title. Rosetsky will have two more break points. The last champion, the 15, rally, four sets down, was back in 1949 when Pancho did it. So the crowd is clearly going to get behind Rosetsky. They want to see more tennis. At least a fourth, if not a fifth set. Two chances to break here early in the third. Oh, oh for three. So far, break chances came in the first set, those three. 30, 40. Hold up just a little bit, and that's all it takes. Rosetsky came back from two sets down at Wimbledon this year against Jonathan Stark. It's the only time he's ever done it. It was a second round match, though, not a final. That's well done then, yeah. Ruzetsky. That was the perfect return for Ruzetsky. He stepped forward at an angle there, then he just goes straight up this line, Ruzetsky and it bounces right on, well, right inside the line. And he flattened out his stroke. He didn't go for the big swing, the big top spin, and it paid dividends for him. Well, this time he knew Raptor was going to go after him. Love 15. John, again, he just bent that first serve in at 96 miles an hour. Of course, it would help if he put more heat on it, but through the first two sets, he was only serving at 47%. It's bumped up a little bit now. So I'm sure he's struggling with that. Like, do I, do I get more first serves in? 15. I don't even think he's getting the serves in, though, that he's taking something off. So right. That's, that's the thing. If he was getting 75%, that'd be one thing. But so he's got all kinds of serving problems. Oh. Oh. Wonder if you know, he's feeling a little flat. The nerves. He's not 100 percent. All these add up to a less power off the serve. Oh. 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 Just wide there. 15, 30. First time we've noticed him staying back on the serve. That was actually the previous game. That was why, too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. 30 all. That break in the last game was the first time Raptor was broken all. since the quarterfinal matchup with Magnus Larson. Now Rosetsky has to back it up. 40, 30. And he's got a game point. Rosetsky turned 24 yesterday, so it'll wait till next weekend to celebrate. He doesn't really want to come to net, Rosetsky. Well, if you do come to net, Mary, make sure you're ready to volley. He just wasn't prepared to volley. Suddenly the ball was there, and it's too late already. you got to come to net with that racket in front of you, ready to make a quick move. Oh. Oh. You can see why he's, he's thinking about whether or not to come in. He's missed so many easy volleys today. But this is the easiest of all, right here. Perfect serve. No chance for Rafter there. Goes for too much. And a break point for Rafter. Oh, 
143 just out. Would have been the hottest of all time. through the careless error of the previous point. He sure needed that big forehand there. It made things a lot easier. Did not want to miss that volley because he's missed way too many already. Well, if his serving improves, he won't be forced to hit so many tough volleys or miss so many easy ones. The pressure will be off. Oh. And it does appear to me, Mary, as we see ace number six, he's putting a little more on it. Advantage Rosetsky. I think it's a very, very good idea. Game Aim to Rosetsky to go up three love in the third. First two sets to Raptor. Oh. Raptor serving love three in the third. Cruise through the first two sets. Three and two. Oh. Love 15. And opens with a double in this game, his fourth. a string there off the first serve. He's going to have to grab another one. It's not an easy position. I hit a second serve with a different racket. But I've heard it's up for things. He's got plenty to choose from in that bag of his. Bag of tricks. Patrick Rafter at this year's U.S. Open. What a run for this Aussie. He has really come into his own. Looking poised at the moment, despite being a breakdown to win his first U.S. Open title. Just don't show Rosetsky that stat that Pancho Gonzalez is last guy that won in almost 50 Both years ago. Credit to Rizetsky, though. He's picked it up when he really desperately needed to. Gotten off a good start. Hung tough that previous game. Now looking for the second break of the third set. I'd love 30. Fifteen. There's an example where he should have hit that ball flatter again. Didn't need to go for so much. Missed it. Instead of getting it right down at Rafter's feet, forcing him to hit up, he gives him the freebie. Discouraged Greg Rosetsky. It was the right idea. Yes, he's made way too many volley errors, but that was the play. Look at Rafter staying back on the second serve. Haven't seen that. So at least he's got Rafter slightly out of his game plan. 30 all. Another double and a break point coming for Rosetsky. The black ribbon he's wearing is a mark of respect for Diana, the Princess of Wales. Deuce. Rosetsky said, I hope I provided a bit of a lift after the terrible events of the week. But it's still true that tennis has no comparison comparison with what so tragically happened. <laughs> Full Rosetsky there. Rosetsky thought that serve was wide, but he faked like he was going to hit the kicker, which would have been to Greg's forehand. 
And it does look like it was a little wide. I think Rzeski had a point. Red points up to us. <laughs> Make him feel a little bit better. I don't, I don't know if that makes him we feel better or worse. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was a good we idea. We called it wide for him, so he's moral victory. <laughs> what was that sign you gave him? But now he him? feels like he's been hosed. I get him <laughs> yeah. the wide sign. Like, yeah, the serve was out. I don't know if that'll make him feel better or worse. We'll have to see. Oops. Oh! Game wrap. See, now he feels like he's gotten cheated. And he has. <laughs> he has to remember. So he's, he's feeling still appropriate. <laughs> appropriate. Yeah. He leads 3-1. Still up a break. Beautiful look at Manhattan. Pictures coming from the Fuji Film Blimp. Providing... Pictures for the world feed, CBS Sports, and everyone else at the open. As it settles in behind Ash Stadium. It's such a difficult thing to play that shot, that angle from as far back as Patrick Grafter did. And again, he did not overplay it. A lot of people would just go for a blazing backhand down the line or something. This guy instead fades one cross court and draws the air. Just the clarity of thought of a shot like that is very impressive. Very nice to watch. That one he rips. Uh. Took plenty of time to line it up and took a big old cut at that backhand. And he 15, caught Rosetsky 30. leaning. Well, he took a rip at it. He also hit plenty of tops to make sure that ball bounced well inside the baseline, which it did. 15-30. A little lucky break there for the Aussie. Once again, we see that great athletic ability. Rafter runs it down, but watch this for it. It clips the tape just slightly. And Ruzetsky cannot believe it. It's well, almost between his legs. Two break points. Now he's really going to be mad about that call. Oh, now he's still <laughs> smarting from it, probably. Chance to get it level here in the third. Oh, yes, sir. He'll have one more chance to... Break them. I'll tell you, those big hitters, including the top pro, should be taking a page out of Raptor's book, the way he's mixing things up so beautifully. And it would make those big shots more effective. It'd seem even harder. One more break point chance for Raptor. Oh. He, went out, he went out wide, Jim, but he put more mustard on it. 114 out wide is more or less the equivalent of about 10 miles per hour straight up the line, at least five to 10 miles. You saw Ruzetsky play Krychek where he was the better athlete. Now you see Rafter Ruzetsky, where Rafter's a little bit better. Greg hesitates there, let that ball get behind him, pulls up, pretty much did everything wrong on that stroke. And Subsequently, down another break point. Third break point of the game. And from Raptor, you just sense this unthinkable physical confidence at this point. I mean, athletically, fitness-wise, tactically. He knows just what has to happen, and he catches it. Got the line and the break. Raptor once again beautifully under control. He's got this one lined up. Rizetsky sees Rizetsky move. Back on serve in the third set. Second serve coming for Raptor. Fresh off breaking Rizetsky. Back on serve in the third. He won the first two sets. <laughs> Stadium and the nearby Unisphere here at the National Tennis Center. Seeing outstanding play by Patrick Rafter. He's only surrendered one set of this U.S. Open. He's up two sets today. Jim Nance with John McEnroe, Mary Carrillo. 
seemed like just a moment ago it was three love Rosetsky in the third that lead felt fat to a lot of people but it only represented one break and that's gone now oh. the ramp is showing he's human in that he pulled up badly on that pulled it well wide The rafter is clearly dominated, and that pretty much indicates it as well. Better serve percentage, more winners, less errors. Two sets to love lead in the finals. <laughs> Raptor is prepared to volley. He hits the serve. He gets the rack out in front of him. Keeps it out in front of him. Ruzetsky had the high return. Raptor just knocked it away. 40-15. This fall, Gregory Hines makes his television debut on CBS as a single dad trying to raise a son in the 90s. The Gregory Hines Show on the new CBS Friday night starting this fall. Love. Well, Patrick Rafter should have won that point. Decided to go behind Rizetsky. We see Rizetsky's problem. Winning enough first serve points. Don't see that too often. A love off the return. 30 love. And that's a purely defensive shot. Quickly to 30 love. Those first two sets really dropped that percentage way down. Starting to get it back together here, Rizetsky. Did have the early break, we blew that. Now three, three all, 30 love. Brian Teacher on the left. Wazinski's coach approving. 40 love. Well, Rafter gave Greg one last shot at it. Greg made the most of it. He's laboring a little bit out there. He's struggling mentally. He's got to keep positive. Something that Brian Teacher is trying to help him with. That will make it. 138 ace. Love game, 4-3 on serve in the third. Ruzeski leads 4-3. Rafter's turn to serve. Tired legs, though quite evident today for Ruzetsky. Well, we know he's not 100%, and that's going to hurt him off the serve. He looked to be struggling movement-wise on that pass, although he came up with a nice-looking game at 3-0. If he can hit a couple shots, a couple winners, get a little confidence, you know the crowd's going to get behind him, and that adrenaline pump could help him out these last couple sets. Let's face it, he doesn't have any more tennis to play after this match, so let it all, I mean all, hang out. Just kidding, Patrick. We have to have a little fun there. 30 love. Never for a split second was he serious. Okay. Maybe the New York Ballet took a good look at that. Took notice. Very Barishnikov. That reminded me of what Hopnanas do, Mayor. The double knee jumps. 
a staple of the Australian team. Harry Hotman, that's right. He used to make us and everybody else at his camps do those kangaroo jumps. He never did one that way. Oh. Raptor's serving has really failed him in this third set. He was up over the 70s in the first two sets. Now he's in the 40s. And that's why Rosetsky's getting a better look at some of these returns. <coughs> that's not good enough. Oh, and misses the spike. Normally, Raptor jocks that one back very easily. Coach Roach, Tony Roach, his Davis Cup coach, watching on. This is a difficult shot to hit, but Raptor often makes it look simple. That's not a good decision there by Raptor. He didn't, wasn't in the position to knock that off of the backhand side. That's takes too much strength, even more than Rafter has. You're supposed to go for angle on that, not power. <laughs> ah! Surprisingly, it was the Argentine, Guillermo Vilas, who I thought had one of the great backhand overheads. Better than his forehand overhead. <laughs> he had great upper body strength. He was, he was unbelievable up there. <laughs> That's the winner maybe he was looking for, get this crowd alive. He had 11 winners, did Rosetsky in the first two sets, now eight in the third alone. I mean, take a look at this. I mean, that volley was tremendous. Rosetsky with the screamer cross court. <laughs> Never figure out why everyone thinks that's so funny. <laughs> At least he's a gentleman about it. Every time there's a errant toss, he apologizes immediately. That's just too good, Patrick Raffle. Another good low return. 40, 40, 40. Just another good, solid volley that Ruzetsky couldn't handle. And that's all you can ask for. of wrap-up of all the action, images, oh. names, and faces that made this year's Open one to remember. Tomorrow evening at 7 Eastern, there's a chat session with a special mystery guest. Get it all at cbs.sportsline.com. Fifteen love. He's not going to win those battles. The field battles at net. The Raptors top dog right now at the net. Uh, that, that's what's so pretty about watching Patrick Raptor play old style dinkum Aussie tennis from the 50s and 60s. That is beautiful. New shots in the Raptor repertoire. Not only the serve volley, but now the backhand pass up the line. A classic one-handed backhand pass. This, 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 should be, this should be black and white footage watching <laughs> Patrick Rafter play. The good news is guys that win tournaments like this, the little guys start playing like them. That's right. Well, I'd love people to copy this guy's game, Raptors. And check the toss there from Rosetsky. <laughs> Australians dominated tennis. Three of the four majors were played on grass, which is what Australians grew up on. So there was an awful lot of serving and volume. And the Australian, Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open were played on grass. And that's why guys like Roach and Newcomb and Emma, uh, Rosewall, Laver, Fred Stalling. Yeah. Oh! 
And that's, what, that's why they played this style tennis, the, the type that hopefully Patrick Rafter will resuscitate. I mean, those boys, a lot, an awful lot of their titles came on grass. Well, quite a few of them were able to win the French Open by serving and volley. You might see a guy by the name of Mark Philippoussis doing some more serve volley. Again, though, John, I, I think one of the reasons a guy like Rosetsky and Philippoussis, they have underdeveloped volley games is because their serves are so bad. <laughs> It's easier to pull back than try to hit harder, so. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> try hitting it 50 miles an hour when it's not in your bag. Well, that's the thing. Patrick Rafter, again, has a nice big swing at that 96 mile an hour serve. Rafter doesn't try to serve people off the court. His whole idea is the combo platter serve volley. Although I must say, he is serving harder than he ever has well, right here at the U.S. Open. Dangerous. And Another now, volley miss. Yeah, and a break point, which could leave Raptors serving for the match. If he converts this one. He's trying to keep calm now. He's super excited right now. He'll be serving for the U.S. Open if he wins this point. Good serve by Rosetsky. Bring it to Deuce. It's a lot tougher to hit the serve break point when you're a game away from the U.S. Open. Ruzeski right on the line, slicing away from Rafter. He needed to move forward, got a little hesitant, moved sideways, and that's all it took. He made a quick adjustment, though. That return was the same return except on the deuce side, and he did move forward. And he's taking his time, keeping his cool on the pass. Just lining up, excellent technique, not going for too much. Ruzetsky's been sluggish, let's face it, at Nato and off to serve. Another break point. We saw him hang tough against Bjorkman yesterday, two sets to one down. Let's see what Greg Ruzetsky has up his sleeve here. Four all deuce. This match really has become an awful lot like the women's final, where the more complete game of Martina Hingis was able to take all of the power of Venus Williams and also take all the unforced errors. So that's a that nice hole. That service game to lead 5-4 in the third. Ruzetsky leads 5-4. And now, this tournament summary, sponsored by American Express, proud sponsor of the U.S. Open. Well, Hingis wins in straight sets, didn't drop a set this year's Open, her third slam title of the year. And John, it was on this day, 17 years ago, when you defeated Borg to win your second straight singles title. Back at the U.S. Open, I'm Andrea Joyce. Way up top, Arthur Ashe Stadium. We used to do this in Stefan Edberg's heydays with the Swedish fans, and now we're up here with the Australians. It seems to be Australia's day. How big is this going to be back home? Well, back home, Australia, um, Patrick's been a great tennis player over the last couple of years. He's really improved. Uh, in the uh, Australian Open a couple of years ago, he played Andre Agassi in the quarterfinals. It was just a huge match. This Are they partying back home? Oh. Wow, what do you think? Uh, they're going crazy back home. They'll be on the streets, they'll be on the chairs, they'll be going crazy back home. All right, send it back to you guys. <laughs> as crazy as you can get at, uh, well, they're approaching 8 in the morning in Australia. Interesting, the fan brought up the Agassi situation. The key match they played a few years ago at the Australian, which really deflated Rafter. Yeah, I forgot the score of that one. <laughs> Rafter lost in straight sets to Agassi. That was back 15 all. in 95 at the Australian, including six love final set. Well, Andre Agassi. was also playing the absolute best tennis of his tennis life so far. Won that tournament. Had won the Open a few months earlier, so hardly a bad loss for Patrick that time. And it was the biggest television event. You know, I was down at the Australian Open that year. It was a it was a night match, and millions and millions of Aussies watched. Good 
seemed to send his career in a tailspin, and by the end of 95, he was having wrist surgery, which 15, was further compounded by inflammation of the elbow. He still has nagging shoulder problems, but what a sweet revenge it was for him to beat Agassi at this year's Open. Every time it looked like he was in danger, Rafter came up with a very timely and well-placed serve. And one more set point here for Rosetsky. right here. What an effort to run this down and then hit that on top of it. Slides off that forehand. Six, please. Four Goes seven. for broke Zetsky and it pays off. We are 6-4 to Rosetsky. going to be the shot of his career if he comes back and wins this match. I mean, that is an absolutely phenomenal backhand. Tensed up on that break point for all. It's not recovered since, and Ruzeski is bursting with the adrenaline right now. Smelling a possible fifth set here. Ah! <laughs> Showing some nice athletic <laughs> moves there. Almost falls down here. I think, yeah, that's. A tad inelegant, it's, but... It's different, but it, <laughs> he'll take it. Look at that. Game resistance. And take that. Ace number eight. First game of the fourth set first to Rosetsky. Back after this message and a word from the local. CBS Sports coverage of the U.S. Open. A USTA event is sponsored by Travelers Insurance. Heineken. IBM and by American Express. The set point. From our angle, you just wondered, would he get there? Well, we saw Venus Williams hold off a match point against Arena Sperlea in the semifinals by hitting a backhand that big. Patrick Rafter coming back on court after a quick bathroom break. Probably a good time for Rafter to take a bathroom break. You know what I mean, mentally. Rizetsky just got the confidence boost of his career. Time. So a 
momentum change here, and Wozetsky um, was in real danger there in the ninth game and pulled out of it with three break points. Well, I'm looking after. forward to a fifth set. Okay. <laughs> Forget the fourth. <laughs> he said that after the first uh, point of the fourth yes, set. He, he said, looks like a fifth set. Maybe you're right. I wouldn't mind it. There's the only guy that would probably mind it, right here. We're serving set down to 45% there. Still at 62% for the match, but not going in the right direction at the moment. For the first time in a great while, actually showing a little nerves there, Patrick Rafter. Hello, 15. Six double fault. He'll admit to uh, caving into a case of the nerves. It happened in the third set against Agassi. What happens with every single athlete on this planet? You know, some admit it, some pretend not to, but believe me, it does. That uh, set that he just dropped was only the second set he's been defeated he in this He saved his best uh, two matches for you-know-who, Agassi and Chang. Although he destroyed Magnus Norman in the second round. I'd much rather watch somebody get nervous and choke a little bit than watch somebody tank, which is, you know, which is much worse. I mean, at least when you're, when you're nervous, it means you care. That's like a hundred times worse. Go in there and throw in the towel. Patrick Rafter has lost his edge right here. Down 15-30 now. Ruzetsky's got that adrenaline pump, and he gets this early break. We may soon be in a fifth set. Ruzetsky caught right in the middle there, knowing he just chipped the return or try to hit over it. And end up doing neither one too late for the chip 30 all Patrick Rafter for making that point a lot more exciting than it needed to be. <laughs> Kept hitting it back to Greg Ruzetsky, even this overhead here. Gave Ruzetsky one last chance, and at 6-3, he almost pulled it off. Game point for Rafter. There's a new drama from the creators of Hill Street Blues. That's coming to CBS this fall, Brooklyn South. Tune in this fall to CBS, Brooklyn South. Central Queens, <laughs> we're in a fourth Love set drama of our own. I think up here is up there was where the English and Aussies were. <laughs> thumb is when the, the defensive locks hit up that high, you let it bounce. Oh. Give yourself time to set it up, but Greg decides to hit not one, but two overheads in the air. First one, he hits right back the rafter with nothing on it, but hits to the open court the second time. Both guys lately have taken more than one volley to finish points. 
So that that's says something about the quality of their volleying, especially Raptors. And that's how you want to play points. You know, you don't, if you're hitting more than one volley, it means you're not putting enough on the first and giving a guy a look at a, at a, at a pass. God knows the nerves have got to be starting exactly. to come in here. These poor guys have never been in a slam final. I shouldn't say poor guys. These two lucky guys. But they are feeling the pressure. They want to play their best. They want to show the viewers out there that they're two of the best tennis players in the world. This is the perfect showcase for the American audience. Well, a well-appreciated second effort here by Ruzetsky. Particularly this one here. Rafter was standing there with an easy put away. Scrambling. Not willing to dive on this hardcore surface. Oh, and a break point. He let that drop too low. Coming now for Rafter. 30, 40. Then he dropped his wrist. Didn't punch out to go after it. And that's all it takes. That ball dropped below the net. He opened the face of his right, which is exactly what you don't want to do. Just trying to guide it in instead of break point down. Raptors just everywhere. What anticipation. Anticipation, yes, Jim, but a little bit of choking by Ruzetsky there. Patrick Raptor is one fired up Aussie. And up a break in the fourth. It's quite uh, improbable, really, when you think about it, that Rosetsky would even be here in the final at the Open. He'd never even won a match before this year. Taken out in the first round the last three years. Then he opened up this season's Grand Slam series out in the first round at the Australian, out in the first round at the French. It came to life at Wimbledon. Oh! Reaching the quarters. So that will win in three previous visits here, six match victories to get to the final. You should start it over like we've just come back and say the same thing about Rafter now. Guy that shouldn't be here, ha hasn't done particularly well at the U.S. Open, and here he is. Hold serve four times, and you are the U.S. Open love. champ. Rosetsky unseated. Of course, Agassi won at 94 when he was not seated. Kodish lost to Smith in 71. Since the open era, unseated <laughs> players excelling here. Probably <laughs> up too high. Rafter puts it away easily. Excuse me, that return of serve. 30 low. Raptor just needs to start getting more of his first serves back, though. In that third set, his serving dropped to 47. His second serves, you can see he's getting killed on second serves, and that's why he lost that third set. Patrick didn't mean this, but he did the, it did the job, that's for sure. And Rzeski tried a low percentage shot. That spin, a sideways spin off the forehand, that's not going to work too often. You run all that way to hit that. 40 to love. <laughs> Three one round. Okay, round. Saturday, the address is CBS for the season premiere of NASDAQ College Football. Arizona State coming off the Rose Bowl performance. Rose Bowl season of a year ago takes on Miami. Some will see South Carolina, Georgia, Illinois, and Louisville. It all starts with the college football today, 3 o'clock. Oh, no. Second time in the match we've seen that. Well, again, he wants so badly to win this. Off a big serving and at the net resist me. John, my question to you, you've got the softest hands I've ever seen. Can this guy, with the help of, of his coach, get softer hands? I mean, how much can you improve at net with, with you know, you don't have the I don't natural think, feel? I don't think you'll have the feel of a Rafter and Edberg, but he clearly can improve upon it. His technique goes off. I mean, there's an example, just a mental mistake, too. I mean, that's not a, a tough volley at all. Look at that. 
he's really in trouble of yielding a second break here. Well, he's probably still thinking about Low that party. volley miss, so he kicks up this second serve. But Rafter, that's not an easy return. It's a tremendous return is what it was. Kicked away from his forehand, still got it across court for a winner. That's why. Three break points. This is it. This really is. Two you breaks. lose this game. Oh, now you got to believe he's got no shot if he gets down two breaks the way Rafter's playing. He's got to pull this game out. One saved. 15, 40. And he wants that ball back. We saw him do that against Bjorkman yesterday. Started to chase down the lucky tennis ball. Very sentimental fellow. Really <laughs> is. Oh, it's just wide. I thought that was too good. So did Rafter for a second. 30, 40. Ball disappeared for a moment, but nostalgia in the air. He calls for it back as it reemerges. Can he make another save? Well yes. Done. Well done. Thank you. If he can sneak this game out, Rafter's going to feel some pressure now. He's blown that chance. I think Raptor, John, you're right. Raptor's feeling the, the pressure. Ruzetsky isn't playing his best ball, but he's trying so hard. He Not really giving a, Raptor any relief emotionally. He does compete a lot better than he does he did even a year ago. And that's really paid off for him. Patrick Rafter responding once again. Tony Roach impressed. This is a new shot in the Rafter arsenal. Straight up the line, smacks it for a winner. Break point number four this game. Rafter returned the heavy stuff. Dude. Correct that at 141. As Mary has pointed out on a number of occasions, when you serve that hard, you're not going to be in a good volleying position. So he's a little lucky. When it came back, he won the point. It's going to go long. Advantage Rosetsky. Maybe there'll be a server who will start like momentum like 10 feet behind the baseline. By the time they hit it 140, they're like moving towards the net. Now that would be truly frightening. That's for the next millennium. Yeah. And it is at 139. Boy, he had to come back in that game, and he pulled it off from Love 40. That's your lead, 32. Well, the sun just came up about an hour ago in Australia. And the Aussie Rafter serving <laughs> up a break in the fourth. <laughs> it's eight. 17 Monday morning. Good morning, Australia. 15 we'll go from Good morning to a great morning. He can pull out this fourth set. Become the first Aussie to win a slam since Cash at the 87 Wimbledon. <laughs> and even though he lost the game, well, he, he could tell himself, look, I made Ruzeski work awful hard. He's not going to have as much left to try to break me. So I would recommend the Rafter play each and every point all out. Go for that second break. Pull it off. You are the U.S. Open champ. Rafter was asked after the first round. 30-15. Win. Who would be a great U.S. Open for you? He said, I'd be happy to make it to the quarters. Now if you can just close out this set up a break, he'll be the champion. Agassi didn't exactly endorse his chances to win after no, being didn't. defeated by Rafter. Thirty all. 
We're after working extremely hard, but Ruzetsky with the angle there, too good. Showing some nice feel, the big man. Andre Agassi, after losing to Raptor, didn't think he'd, he'd get much further. Raptor was already assigning it to one of the one of the bigger seeds. Well, I think he was thinking of Mr. Michael Chang, mm. that was the guy <coughs> that he thought Raptor would beat. Ruzetsky, well done. Great point right here for Greg Ruzetsky. He was down 3-1, low 30, 40, 40 a couple seconds ago. played a phenomenal point here and finally Raptor who has tightened up throughout this fourth set is really feeling it now Rosetsky back on serve oh. 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 real tight there <laughs> loosened up his shoulders on that one gave it a bit of a nudge as the Aussies say Love 15. That's what Rod Laver used to say. If you feel yourself getting tight, just loosen up and give the ball a nudge. And that's what he did. Oh. Laver said, I used to, when I got tight, I'd try to relax and go for the line. Oh. It's not an easy thing to do when you're, when you're choking. Yeah, but he could pull it off. some court coverage once again doesn't go for too much with that backhand that opens up this beautiful forehand cross court Rafter looks like he just held sir I mean he's he's had his chances to really take control hasn't he still remain composed out there 30 all that's he's putting a little bit more uh, Pace on that serve out wide, and Raptors having trouble handling it now. Oh, misjudge. It's in. And a break point. Very close. I think that caught the back of the line. 30 40. And the Fizee Take that game. back. The ball, the, ball, the ball was out. Wow. The only good news is Rzeski thought it may have been in the position he was in. He never argued it. Zetsky has worked extremely hard out there. He has hung tough and deserves a lot of credit for this effort today. Because Rafter is playing at the top of his game, and because Rzetsky's hung so tough, he's forced, almost forced Rafter to get tight. Goes wide and gets into hold. 4-3. Rzetsky in the fourth. Manhattan skyline looking magnificent today with the views from the 
Fujifilm blimp. <coughs> first serve had to feel good for Patrick Rafter, 112 mile an hour low. serve to start things. For the first two sets, he served at 71%. In the last two, he's down 49%. That's why his life has gotten more complicated on this Sunday evening. <coughs> two, two first serves in a row. 30 low. Volley from Patrick Rafter. He got it very, very deep and gave Rosetsky no angle. Right down pretty much the center of the court. Thoughtful stuff. in overtime against Tennessee. Dick Vermeil's first loss with the Rams. 49ers beat him by a field goal. It just appears to me that Rosetsky's got a little bit more bounce. Temperatures dropped a little bit. Feels nice down there. Not much wind. He's got to be thinking, listen, I only got a couple more games of this forest and one more fifth set, so I'm just going to let it go. And start hitting serves like that. There it is. Oh, the record. The hardest serve in history. A look at history. I think you had just said he's getting stronger. Big call there, John. Another big one. 137. He took a little off that one. Yeah. Cyclops didn't see that. <laughs> 40 long. He's trying to mix it up now. 143, 137. <laughs> yeah. Keep her after guessing. <laughs> <laughs> By the year 2000. Just looking at his racket, I think he may have cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "By the year 2000, you'll see a serve at 150. Maybe it'll be today." <laughs> oh, went for the big one, blew it up on 40 love. I don't know if Brian Teacher is close thrilled about that, but the good news is he does it only when he's up 40 love. I hope so. But if he loses his game, yeah, exactly. We're going for a 141 mile an hour second. We'll look pretty dumb. Uh-oh. Oh, right. Well, it's 40, slowly 30. but surely starting to look a little dumber. That's right. He stretched, got that back in vibe, and Raptor has the easy put away. 40-30. Probably go out wide this time. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Game is that Mark Zavacusa step aside. Fred Rosetsky owns the biggest serve in history. He's up 5-4 in the fourth. If you're Patrick Rafter, you have to respect that serve out wide, which makes 143 mile per hour serve difficult to deal with. Next point, right, 137, please. he looked at his right. I think I might have broken this baby. Thank you. That was some display there. Last game by Greg Rosetsky. The rafter in the third set was broken at this very spot. Tenth game. Oh. Ran out of court, did Rosetsky. 15 love. Well, they should move those seats back a little bit where the players sit because one thing about the Arthur Ayer Stadium, it has more room down there and there's no reason he should have that problem. And he actually was worried about running into that chair. Hold it wide. Oh. 
you really have to give a lot of credit to Rosetsky's heart in this match. Even when he hasn't played well, he's competed well throughout this entire match and really put that pressure on Raptor to come up with the goods. Love. Patrick Rafter is going to continue to serve and volley as often as he can, continuing to show excellent athletic ability. No chance for Ruzetsky. Point for five all, four set. Game, Rafter. Five, five. Five all. Rafter briskly moved through the first two sets. Six, three, six, two. Zetsky broke him in the 10th game of the third set to claim that one 6-4. continuing to play what I consider one of the best matches of his life clearly here at the US Open playing his best tennis he's had a couple hiccups but that's what Brian Teacher tried to tell Greg Wazewski that Raptor cannot keep this up and that's been true Raptor is continuing to plug away Wazewski's fighting his heart out now loves 30 at 5 all. Remember, Raptor was up a break and a triple break point to go up two breaks, and then had a break at four all. It's five all now. Tremendous play, Mary. He's been able to get the crowd back on his side, Patrick Brown. What a point here. Uh, he's just trying so hard and coming up so strong. Very, very appealing fellow anyway. Three break points. Attractive tennis all around. Oh. Well, Rosetsky already came back from this kind of deficit earlier in this set. Oh. <laughs> will serve for the U.S. Open title when we come back to Ash Stadium. Raptor one game away from clutching this. Thank you. Eight straight points won by the Aussie. And he should be. Guess right at three different times that point to pull that point out. Peter is in the box, and ever since second round victory, he's been on the phone 
Back to Queensland, urging the Raptor parents to get on the next plane to New York, feeling there was something big about to happen. And it could be happening three points from now. Just tremendous heart by both players there. Rzeski's fighting dearly. Raptor too good. Tremendous court coverage there by Patrick Rafter as we've seen throughout this U.S. Open. Two points away. this stage it's been hard for me to do a lot wrong everything seems to be falling in place for no particular reason it indeed all came together his second career title but his first grand slam and australia celebrates cbs sports coverage of the u.s open a usta event is sponsored by infinity fidelity investments Fuji film and by United Airlines. The 1997 U.S. Open winner is from Australia, Patrick Rafter. That's how he took the news. As he wins in four Raptor sets, wins, the first sets men's one, champion six, three, crown at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Six, His seven, name will go on the trophy with Arthur Ashe and Borg and McEnroe and Connors, Lendl, Sampras, Agassi and Tony Traber. And that's where we're going now for the ceremony. Tony? L ladies and gentlemen, how about a wonderful hand for two great champions in a wonderful match? It is now my pleasure to introduce the President of the United States Tennis Association and the Chairman of the U.S. Open, Harry Marmion. Harry? Thank you, Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making this a great tournament. Thanks CBS USA, our great sponsors, and our great champion. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to award a prize and a present to the tournament referee for this match, Jim Zimmerman from California.
And we have the referee for the U.S. Open, someone that works very hard behind the scenes, Brian Early. Brian? Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the Vice President of Infinity Division, Mr. Tom Eastwood. Tom? Thanks, Tony. This beautiful Arthur Ashe Stadium has started a new tradition at the U.S. Open. And because of the play, Greg and Patrick, we've enjoyed a fabulous inaugural final. Infinity has been the proud sponsor of the U.S. Open Men's Singles Championship for nine consecutive years. And Greg, on behalf of Infinity and all of its retailers nationally, I'm proud to present you with a check for $350,000. Congratulations, Greg. Greg, congratulations. A, a, a wonderful tournament. I know you're a little disappointed that you didn't win the event, but you've had a great, great tournament. Yeah, I've uh, had a good run, but Pat played extremely well, and he deserved to win. He was a great champion today. Your last couple of uh, U.S. Opens, you lost in the first round. Here you end up in the finals. What was the big difference? Um, I didn't lose in the first round. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good answer. How about some good returns of serve and some wonderful passing shots as well? Yeah, I think I've improved my game, but Pat was the bigger player today. He took the advantage on the key points, and that was the difference. All right, Greg, thank you very much. Congratulations to you. And Tom, I think you could have a check for our winner. A new stadium. A new tradition and a new champion. Congratulations, Patrick. On behalf of Infinity, I have a big check from you for you from the Big Apple. Patrick, six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Congratulations. How do you like the sound of Pat Rafter, U.S. Open champion? I just can't believe it at the moment. It's just, um, I'm in a fantasy land. Uh, you know, it was uh, something I never dreamed of. I mean, I mean, you dream of, but you never think would happen. Um, and, you know, it was a, a very tight match between myself and Greg today, and it could have gone either way. And, and you know, um, it, was, uh, it was very tough for Greg to lose today, but he's such a fantastic sportsmanship, sportsman and, and given me the... You know, some nice words of, you know, he didn't need to do that. Thank you very much, Greg. Harry Marmion, I think you have a nice trophy you'd like to present. I do. The first Australian to win the U.S. Open, or the last Australian, was in 1973. Congratulations. Your 1997 U.S. Open men's singles champion, Patrick Rafter. Well, if we would have showed you this picture two weeks ago in a crystal ball, I'm not sure you would have picked Patrick Rafter to win the U.S. Open, but believe me, there he is. And what a great tournament he had, and he made it to, right to the very end, Patrick. What a story, Pat. I mean, here's a guy who's won one tournament in his entire career, and that was a pretty minor tournament right before Wimbledon a couple years ago. And here he is winning the U.S. Open title. It's about a little after 9 o'clock, maybe closer to 10 in uh, Australia this morning, and I'm sure there's some celebration there as Australian tennis is uh, in the headlines again. Well, Australian tennis has uh, had so many great champions over the years, and for so many years they're saying, hey, who's the next guy going to be? And I remember a couple years ago they were talking about that match Rafter played with Agassi at the Australian, and we were saying, maybe it's going to be Rafter. And he had some problems. Now, 
all of a sudden the guy comes up. I've never seen, Pat, someone cover the net the way he has these couple weeks and read the net and just unbelievable play by Rafter and his whole game improved and what a dream two weeks for him. All right, Patrick, uh, we say goodbye here. How about one more high five? You got it. <laughs> okay. And a reminder that next weekend the address is CBS for the season premiere of the NASDAQ College Football. Many of you will see Arizona State against Miami. Elsewhere you'll see South Carolina and Georgia. Illinois against Louisville. Check your local listings. It all begins at 3 o'clock Eastern with Jim Nance, Lou Holtz, and Craig James on the pregame show. Well, that does it for this year's edition of the toughest okay. tournament in tennis. Big time New York City tennis. Last one. I want to say goodbye now. A tribute not only to the outstanding players, but also to our friends and colleagues here at CBS Sports, my friends behind the cameras. You are the best in the business. I will miss you all. Good night and goodbye.